fellow followers, welcome back to Fanzine. Greg here, and today I have for you the streaming bubble has burst. Yes, that is true. It has finally burst. I do believe we are on a, the precipice here of uh, some change in Hollywood and entertainment and the streaming services and all that. Uh, if, you, if nobody's been paying attention, trust me, there's a lot going on right now. And uh, there's this article that just came out in the making of this video from Vanity Fair, which I'm going to cover a little bit here. I, I'm not going to cover the whole article because the article was pretty long, but it had some really cool stuff and stuff I wanted to talk a little bit about in a video for you guys. Uh, but I will put a link in the description down below so you can go read the whole article. But uh, this first paragraph here that I'm going to read, uh, this is really what spread an ideal for this, uh, this video. So let's go over this and let's see where this leads. Netflix loss of subscribers caused the company's market cap to dip $54 billion last year, and Disney, NBC Universal, and Paramount collectively accumulated more than $8.3 billion in streaming losses. Wall Street, unsurprisingly, is second-guessing the throw-everything-at-the-wall mentality that fueled the streaming arms race. Now, Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery... And others have laid off thousands of staffers, pulled the plug on underperforming programming, and vowed to be more cautious. And on top of that, which it continues in that part of the article there, is that the looming writer strike is coming. There's a Yes, if you don't know, there's a writer strike coming in Hollywood uh, since I think the last one was in 2007. Uh, you, this is all like sort of building in upon itself. You know, with everything that's happening in streaming and entertainment and everything, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just crazy. It's wild. Uh, um, but it's, it, I don't know what the writer's strike will do or how it will happen. I, I don't know. But I, I see this out there. And as somebody who's a physical media collector, I love physical media. I, that's where I love – I get my passion and joy thinking back on the video store, which I miss. Streaming put out the video store. Streaming killed the video store. And so right from the get-go, the streaming has always sort of been on my – crap list and not that i haven't i have streaming i won't deny that i have streaming services my favorites are shutter and full moon features which i do worry about what will happen with shutter and full moon features once this all shakes out but hollywood has done this to themselves and one way i do so i feel a little bad in other ways i don't feel bad because they've done this to themselves and uh, like it mentions in that article there were so many shows and programmings being greenlit and i've talked about this before I, i've mentioned it before i've even talked with uh, robert meyer burnett about this is that uh they were green lighting so many shows and movies for streaming services than have ever been green light in the history of hollywood some of them that would have waited for years before they were actually green lit because you know what they actually do talk about in that vanity fair article a little bit is that how some of the shows that have sort of been successful they were cultivated through years they were kind of worked on before they were fully just like put in uh, you know in front of your screen but during the pandemic and everything this everybody just like green light so many shows and you know we were all forced to stay in our homes uh, so everybody was watching and now that we're all back sort of in society, you know, walking about, we're not doing that anymore. And I'm sorry, I, I, I get I get what you're, uh, you know, the writers, I get it and everything, but you're part of the problem too because uh, you've, you've started putting more messaging and uh, politicking and stuff in the entertainment over a character and story. And uh, that did something else that that's mentioned in this article is that because uh, they talked to writers and executives, I think is one of the writers has said that, uh, you know, they fear that, you know, when stuff like this happens in Hollywood and they rechange things and, you know, restructure and to fix everything is that uh, the women of color, women and people of color will be left out, you know, <laughs> which I, I, you know, on one hand, I, it's. Like I said, they sort of made their own bed, and and it's not that we I don't want diverse shows or anything like that. I think you can do diverse shows and have women, women people of color running shows. That's that's perfectly fine. I've never would never take that away from anybody. It's just the fact that the matter is that it's prioritizing that over story and character, and I think that's what makes shows from like the eighties and nineties and seventies and all that work. And like even I know you know even like Quentin Tarantino talks about you know people were much more groundbreaking in the 70s and you could do things and like have unhappy endings in movies and stuff like that and stuff like that you know and they were much more creative and they were telling stories and yes and the 70s were sort of a political area era where you know those stories sort of worked but it wasn't over prioritized the, the political stuff and messaging wasn't over prioritized uh but then like we had my favorite decades like the 50s the 80s and the 90s i really felt like that was just like where people got a little more uh story involved and maybe just making movies for fun and entertainment that's what, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. That's what I love, entertainment and entertainment in a fun, lighthearted way with cool characters, horror movies, superhero movies that 
before, before what they became, you know, just like standalone movies. I miss so many standalone movies. Maybe after all this shakes out, maybe we can have standalone movies, but I really don't think Hollywood's going to learn anything because Hollywood's going to Hollywood. And I mean, in that article, it talks about how a lot of the executives want to franchise everything. Like, uh, you know, they want to make, if you have a franchise, that's where they make money. Because let's make no mistake. This is all about making money. That's all they want to do. And it's just so much content, so much drivel that it just destroyed and, and imploded the entertainment industry at this moment in time. And we're on a weird, it's on a weird pathway because the writer strike could happen May 2nd. And at one hand, I totally get it. But on the other hand, what if the writers go on strike and entertainment improves? I saw that from Paul Chato, I believe. What if, uh, you know, what if they go on strike and entertainment improves? And at the end of the day, also, you got to think about these executives, love them or hate them. They're trying to make money. Like I said, they're trying to make money. They want to make money. So they want their whatever they put out to be a hit. And, they, and honestly, and it's like I just saw with George Lucas, uh, you know, this old, old clip from George Lucas where he talks about um, how people back in the day that made the movies, the companies that like ran the studios and stuff, they actually were movie fans. Nowadays, it's these rich executives and Wall Street and tech companies that don't love movies, that they don't. They don't know anything about movies. They're they're focusing on focus groups and numbers and all this and uh, just, and basically they're the AI before AI. And now we got AI coming in and basically I, I'm not I don't give a crap. I don't want AI in in my entertainment. You just type it into a computer and voila, you got a movie with characters, uh, people that have died. I'm not into that. I like mine. I like my entertainment the way I like my entertainment. And if you know this this new strike and everything that's going to play out with these, uh, you know, executives and streaming services and all that. Uh, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm pretty good right now. I don't have to worry about it. I, I'm not much for modern entertainment anyways. So I'm not really going to be missing out on much of anything. Really. I got what I got. And plus, you know, there's tons of movies, like all the child's play movies. The rest of the Chucky's are coming out from screen file factory, shell factory, the burning on 4k. That's awesome. Upgrade, the movie Upgrade, which was a newer movie, which I actually did like. It's coming to 4K from Shout Factory. Uh, there's so many so many movies that are coming out from the past on Blu-ray, DVD, 4K that I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Plus, you know, I have my collection, and I just – I'm interested to see how those stick out. And it's like I said, stay independent. Stay creative. If you guys want different forms of entertainment, if you guys want something, stop supporting these companies that aren't listening to you, that are just in it for the money, just in it for the content, in it to push an agenda. Start supporting people that make uh, movies and entertainment or videos like here on YouTube that speak to you. You know, maybe they don't have to have your same beliefs. No, trust, we're all different. We all have different beliefs. We all have different religious beliefs. We all have all different political review, uh, opinions, views, whatnot. I know I'm vastly different than a lot of people that watch me, and I know a lot of people that watch me may be vastly different than me and vice versa, you know, all around like that. But if you're looking for something entertaining and fun, support that. Go out there, find your uh, Indiegogo, Kickstarters, uh, comic books, movies, TVs, video games, uh, shows, through that means, independent means, because I find, if I'm honest, it seems like they're a little more in touch with what people want than big budget, billionaire tech corporations and even the writers, you know, and I, I hate saying that because uh, I just it just it feels weird. We're at a weird time in entertainment. And, uh, you know, that's this is what I want to say, you know, at the end of the day, you do you guys, you support you want. Hey, if you're all for all this. I'm cool with that, but it just seems like streaming has caused, like I've said a million times, it's caused more problems than they promised to solve, and we are at a precipice of something, of change that could go drastically bad in one way or drastically good in another way, and we'll have to see how it shakes out. But at the end of the day, support who you want to support, like who you want to like, collect your physical media, because that may be the only time you find good entertainment for quite some time. Uh, and, you know, and it's not like I want Hollywood to die or implode or destroy anything like that. I want to find new stuff. I want to find new modern movies and TV shows that I can get into like I used to that can go alongside of these classics that I collect. You know, I want to still be able to feel that joy and that passion when I see a movie or something and be like, man, that takes me back. Now that was good. And it's not like they're not out there. They're They're out there. But it's few and far between now thanks to streaming and content and so many other 
ideological stupidity <laughs> out there. But let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section down below. What do you think? Do you think the streaming service bubble has burst? Are you for the writer strike against the writer strike? Or are you just going to just like see how it plays out? Personally, I'm just going to see how it plays out. You know, I try to be positive. I try to be upbeat. You know, I, I don't want to put down writers for running the strike. I think they have the right to. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're also a part of the problem as the executives are, the way Hollywood has come. Because nobody's listening to anybody and everybody's over-prioritizing money and content and messaging and all that over everything. But let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments section down below. And if you liked what you saw here, maybe consider hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing the video out, hitting the bell for notification, or joining and becoming a channel member. Uh, that would be awesome if I earned your uh, channel membership. And to all my channel members, thank you each and every one of you guys for being channel members here. Appreciate you all with with every bit of me. I appreciate you guys. And I thank you all for watching wherever you are. Please have a great, safe, happy other day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Always support physical media. It is the superior format. Godspeed.